All right, three, two, one. All right, now we're gonna talk about covalent bonding and how uh, the molecules it makes and their geometries and why they do what they do. So remember, we're talking about all non-metals, so everything to the right of the staircase plus hydrogen. And the important thing to remember is their valence electrons are gonna indicate what types of bonds they make and also the shapes of their bonds. And so it's all about having a full outer shell. So we want to have a full octet, which is eight electrons, except for hydrogen, because hydrogen only has one valence electron. So it wants to look like its closest noble gas, which is helium. Because remember, helium is happy with two in its outer shell. Well, hydrogen is going to form, it's going to share one electron with something else, so it has two electrons in its outer shell. So if I had two hydrogens together, then they would share an electron each. And so now that one has two and it's happy. That one has two and it's happy. Now what you're gonna see is we're gonna be drawing the, uh, the Lewis dots. We're gonna be drawing the electrons, which are its valence electrons. And then when it's sharing, we're gonna make a little uh, circle around it, all right? But you'll also see it as a stick. So if you see something drawn like this, that means that is two things that are sharing one pair of electrons. So that is a single bond. And a single bond is when you share one pair of electrons between atoms. And a single bond is the longest but the weakest of the bonds. All right. Now, a hydrogen, because it only has one valence electron, it can only make single bonds. So it can only make one single bond. All right, so it can't make double and triple. We'll talk about those in a minute. All right, a double bond is when you share two pairs of electrons. We'll talk about that later. And that has middle length, middle strength. And a triple bond is when you share three pairs of electrons. So a double bond would be like if I have like an oxygen and it has six valence electrons and then another oxygen has six valence electrons and it's gonna share a pair here and share a pair here. So when we draw a double bond, it's gonna have two sticks. So it'll look like this. And you still got those two lone pair of electrons. And the triple bond is gonna happen when you share three pairs of electrons. So nitrogens will tend to share three pairs. So it's gonna look like that. And then when you draw with the sticks, there's three sticks between. And, a three, and we're sharing three pairs of electrons, it's called a triple bond. Well, that's the shortest, but the strongest. So I always think of pencils when I think of the, the bond strength and the bond length. If I only have one pencil, okay, it's easy to break, isn't it? I mean, it's easy to break one pencil. So it's long, but it's, it's weak, all right? If I broke that in half, now I have two pencils. I could still break these, but it would be harder, okay, for sure. So these are middle length, middle strength, because I have two pencils like this. And then if I have three pencils, they are the shortest, okay, but they're very difficult. Like I could not put these three things together and break them. It's almost impossible and with my Hulk-like strength, all right? Now, just kidding. But so single bonds are longest but weakest, double bonds, middle length, middle strength, and uh, triple bonds are the shortest but the strongest. So just keep that in mind when we talk about these different types of bonds. Now, getting back to it, as far as hydrogen set goes, we had one valence electron, so it really only has one bonding site. You're going to see me say, you know, bonding sites and, and, and LPs. Okay? And LP is a lone pair. It does not have any of those. Bonding sites, the BS, okay, is like a port. Think of a space station. If I have a space station that's out in space, and it's got, you know, a dock here, a dock here, a dock here, and a dock here, all right? It can, it can dock with four different ships. That's what I want you to think about when we talk about covalent bonding, all right? Because, like, hydrogen only has, what, one docking spike space. So it can only make one bond, okay, because it only has one spot to bond. Do you guys see that? So that's that. Now, the different families are gonna have different stuff. So, we're gonna start with the halogens, okay? When we come over here, the halogens, and I'll use fluorine as an example, they have seven valence electrons. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, the lone pairs are when you have a pair like this, and those are taking up space that block the bonding site. 
all right? So how many bonding sites would this have? It only has one because the other three bonding sites are blocked by long pairs. So how many bonds can fluorine make? It can only make one. So it only has one bonding site and it has three lone pairs of electrons. All right, so one bonding site, three lone pairs. So because it only has one bonding site, it can only make one single bond. That's all it can make. So whether it bonds with itself, or I mean some, you know, another fluorine, you gotta draw the three lone pairs and then the stick, or whether it bonds with some, you know, a hydrogen, or whether it bonds with another halogen. It's just one single bond between them, like that. All right, now, single bonds like that, we call them linear in shape. They're 180 degrees apart from each other. All right, but the, but the, the what do we call it? The uh, geometry is called linear. Okay, you're gonna have different geometries for these other three. All right, so that's a halogen. It has one bonding site, three lone pairs, all single bonds, all right? And it's gonna look like that. Now, we go to oxygen's family. So here's an example of that, just with sticks and stuff like that. So that's, that'd be an example of like a bromine and a fluorine bonded together. All right, linear in shape. The next one is oxygen. Now, oxygen has six valence electrons, all right? So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so you look at it, how many bonding sites does oxygen have? It has one here and one here. So it has two bonding sites and how many lone pairs? Two. two lone pairs. All right. Now, because it has two bonding sites, it can either make two single bonds. What is it going to bond with when it makes single bonds? Either hydrogens or halogens because they love to make single bonds and they're all happy doing that. So if it does that, you know, oxygen. Got these two lone pairs, and then it's going to bond here with a fluorine. It can bond here with another fluorine. Now you say, well, why do you draw like that? Well, these lone pairs, you're going to hear a term called the Vesper, which is valence shell electron pair repulsion. And that is the reason for the different geometries. And what happens is these electrons, they want to get as far away from each other as possible. So they're actually going to push the bonds away. So instead, it, you, you would think it would just look like this, right? Because it'd be 180 degrees, lone pair there, lone pair there, and it would look like that. But it does not. It actually looks like this, okay? And it's 109.5 degrees away from each other, all right? And like I said, these lone pairs right here, like little alien heads, okay? These lone pairs are pushing everything down, all right? So they push it away. And this geometry is called bent. All right, so you're going to see that. It's called bent. If anything in oxygen's family that is making two single bonds, the geometry is called bent. All right, and it's going to look like that. So if I'm just drawing the stick thing, it'll look like that. All right? It's kind of like one of those back rubbers you get from uh, bed, you know, or Bath and Body Works, they have those little like wooden back rubbers with the little ball things on them, right? And they're diagonal from each other, right? It's like this, got a little diagonal ball. This, got a little diagonal ball. You can hold it in like, like a back rubber. You guys ever seen those? No. Whatever. Okay. okay. Now, so that's oxygen, all right? Now, you, you say, well, what, what is even happening here? You guys, every time there's a stick, that's two electrons that's sharing, right? So think, two, four, six, eight. Oxygen has eight. Halogens, two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Remember, they want a full octet of electrons. That's the whole reason we're doing this. You're sharing a pair so it has a full octet. And every time it's a stick, it's a shared pair. That's two electrons. The other way that oxygen can bond, because remember we said it, can, it has two bonding sites, is it can make one double bond where it shares two pairs of electrons. Now, what is it gonna do? It's gonna do that with its own family. So oxygen bonded with another oxygen, okay, is gonna make that, all right? If I draw with the sticks, it looks like that. I can do oxygen with selenium, 
I could do oxygen with tellurium. Either way, anything with its own family, it's going to make a double bond with. All double bonds are linear. All triple bonds are linear, just like 